Hello all, we are looking at question number 15 from Gate Biotechnology 2016 paper. The question is, based on the function, find the odd one out. Option A, miRNA, option B, siRNA, option C, shRNA, and option D, snRNA. So let's learn about the functions of these RNA molecules to answer this question. To answer the question, let's look into the functions of these RNAs. So RNA interference or silencing is a cellular mechanism that inhibits gene expression at the stage of translation or by degrading the mRNA transcripts. So the cell usually adopts this mechanism when it identifies viral RNAs or other foreign RNAs integrated in our genome because of infection and tries to destroy it. So this has been adapted for several applications in agriculture and medicine as well. So the major components of this mechanism are, are microRNAs or miRNAs and siRNAs or small interfering RNAs. So the double-stranded hairpin-like structure is processed by proteins like drosha and dicer to produce single-stranded RNAs which are antisense to the mRNA molecules. So they, they associate with several other proteins to form a complex called RISC or RNA-induced silencing complex. So the microRNA or the siRNA in the RISC guides the complex to bind to the 3' prime untranslated region of an mRNA that base pairs with it. So the complex then denatures the mRNA or blocks the translation of proteins from that particular mRNA and hence that specific gene is silenced. So in the given options, miRNA and siRNA are functionally similar, involved in RNA interference and hence are ruled out. Further, RNAs can be classified into several types based on their structure and function. They play roles in storage or transfer of genetic information, structural maintenance, catalysis and regulation. Only less than 3% which are the mRNA make proteins while the rest of the non-coding RNAs are involved in regulation. So of these we need to understand what shRNAs and snRNAs are to answer the question. Let's first look at shRNA which is short for small hairpin RNA or short hairpin RNA. So uh, shRNAs are artificial RNA molecules with a tight hairpin structure which can be used to silence target gene expression by the process of RNA interference. So expression of shRNA in the cells is accomplished by delivery of plasmids or through viral or bacterial vectors. So shRNA is an advantageous mediator of RNA interference uh, because it especially has a relatively low rate of degradation and turnover. So shRNAs can be cloned into plasmids or uh, vectors, viral vectors, which are then transfected into the cells or introduced into the cells by any means. So once inside the cells, the shRNA is transcribed and processed into its active form. So it functions similar to the siRNA and uh, microRNAs, except that we can decide uh, which RNA it targets and we can artificially synthesize these molecules. So these are used for silencing uh, genes. It is used in agriculture to improve disease and pest resistance, to improve drought tolerance and nutritional value. In medicine, it's been used to treat diseases. For example, a company called Gradalis developed the FANG vaccine, which is used in the treatment of advanced cancers. Another company called Marina Biotech developed CEQ508, which is used to treat familial adenomatous polyposis. So CEQ508 is a live attenuated E. coli, which is genetically engineered to produce and deliver beta-catenin uh, shRNA into the mucosa. And familial adenomatous polyposis is a rare inherited cancer predisposition syndrome, which is characterized by hundreds to thousands of precancerous can uh, colorectal polyps. So if left untreated, the affected individuals, they eventually develop cancer of the colon and or the rectum at a very young age. However, several challenges uh, typically confront shRNA-based therapeutics. So viral-based gene therapy approaches have been proven dangerous in past clinical trials. So, for example, some patients treated with viral vectors for viscot alric syndrome developed acute T-cell leukemia, which is a form of blood cancer. 
If the uh, shRNA is expressed at levels that are too high, the cell might not be able to correctly process the endogenous RNA, which could cause other significant problems. Another challenge is that the, uh, the possibility that the patient might mount an immune response against the therapy. Uh, and finally, there might be off-target effects and the shRNA could silence other unintended genes. Like the shRNA designed to target a specific gene could have more higher sequence similarity with another gene which could be important for cell cycle and other normal functions. And this could disrupt the, the normal functioning of the cell. So we have seen that shRNA uh, functions similar to the microRNA and siRNA in RNA interference except that it's like an artificial RNA molecule. Let us now look into the functions of snRNA. So these are small nuclear RNAs uh, which are also commonly referred to as uRNA and this is a class of small RNA molecules that are found within the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. So they do not have introns, they don't have a poly A tail, and they are non-coding transcripts that functions in the nucleoplasm. So either the, in, in the nucleus or in the cytoplasm of the nucleus. So snRNAs are always associated with a set of specific proteins and the complexes are referred to as small nuclear or uh, ribonucleoproteins. And these are uh, often pronounced as SNRPs, which is written as SNRNP. So each snRNP particle is composed of an snRNA component and several snRNP specific proteins. So the snRNAs can be divided into two classes on the basis of common sequence features and protein cofactors and their functions. So one of them is SM class RNAs. So these RNAs are characterized by a 5' trimethylguanosine cap, a 3' stem loop, and a binding site for a group of seven SM proteins at the SM site that form a heteroheptameric ring structure. So it is comprised of U1, U2, U4, and U4 ATAC, U5, U7, U11, and Q12 proteins. So the SM class genes are transcribed by RNA polymerase 2 that is functionally similar to the POL2 that is used for uh, used by the mammalian protein coding genes that are used to transcribe mRNAs. So the SM class snRNAs are uh, exported from the nucleus for cytoplasmic maturation events. So the other class is LSM class RNAs. This class contain only a monomethyl phosphate cap at the 5' end and a 3' stem loop terminating in a stretch of uridin bases that form the binding site for a distinct heteroheptameric ring of LSM proteins. So these LSM proteins include U6 and U6A tag proteins. The LSM class snRNA genes that code for these proteins are transcribed by POL3 using specialized external promoters. The LSM class snRNAs, they never leave the nucleus. Uh, they just stay in the uh, nucleus as opposed to the uh, SM class RNAs, which leave the nucleus and stay in the nucleoplasm. Let us now look into the functions of these snRNAs. So one of the functions is that they play a role in the spliceosome. So these non-coding RNAs typically function as adapters that position the nucleic acid targets adjacent to an enzymatic activity that is catalyzed either by the RNAs themselves or by associated proteins. So consistent with this idea, the spliceosomal snRNA function is derived by base pairing with short conserved motifs located at the junctions between the expressed exon sequences and the intervening introns of the target mRNAs. So they play a role in alternate splicing by acting as sequences where the uh, spliceosome proteins are recognized and bind to. Uh, let's now look into the roles of snRNAs in spliceosome mediated RNA splicing. So the transesterification reactions are mediated by a huge molecular machine called the spliceosome. So the spliceosome is a large complex made of snRNPs U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6. So these snRNPs have three roles in splicing. So they recognize the 5' splice site and the branch site that is the exon intron junction and they bring the sites together as required and they catalyze the RNA cleavage at the site and the joining of the two exon molecules. 
So the non-SNRNPs that are involved in splicing are U2AF, that is U2 auxiliary factor, and branch point binding protein, which is BBB. So further, U11 and U12 components of the alternative spliceosome have the same roles in splicing reactions as U1 and U2 of the major form, but they recognize distinct sequences. So similarly, U4 and U6 have equivalent counterparts in both spliceosome forms. So here's an overview of the splicing mechanism. Uh, the SNRNP proteins, they bind to the exon intron junctions they bring the junctions closer and they cleave off the introns while stitching the exons together to form an mRNA transcript. There are several diseases associated with the human spliceosomes. For example, mutations in the minor spliceosomal SNRNA U4A tag were recently shown to result in microcephalic osteodysplastic primordial dwarfism, that is MOPD, type 1178 which is a rare genetic defect that causes severe growth retardation or dwarfism and infant death. Also, chronic lymphocytic leukemia and myelodysplasia have also been associated with such splicing defects. So these are caused by mutations in U2 SNRNP, such as splicing factor 3B uh, subunit 1, which is SF3B1, and U2 auxiliary factor 35, U2AF35. So these mutations result in defective SNRNP assembly, deregulated alternative splicing, or accumulation of unspliced mRNA. So these may uh, alter the expression of multiple genes and protein translations. So misregulation of splicing factor levels has all often been uh, found to be associated with various neoplasias, that is like uh, cancers. So therefore, targeting the spliceosome function may provide a new route for cancer therapy as well. SNRNPs are also involved in histone gene maturation. A histone is a protein that provides structural support for a chromosome. Each chromosome contains a long molecule of DNA which must fit, fit into the cell's nucleus. So to do that, the DNA wraps around complexes of histone proteins which gives the chromosome a more compact shape. So the modifications of these histones also influence tra transcription regulation. So moreover, histone mRNAs are tightly regulated and are present in high levels only in the S phase of the cell cycle to provide the histone proteins necessary for packaging the newly replicated DNA. So the main features distinguishing these histone mRNAs from all the other mRNAs are their lack of introns and the poly A tails. So the three prime ends of these histone mRNAs are formed by endonucleolytic cleavage of longer premature mRNAs that is mechanistically different from the cleavage of polyarylation reaction that generates all the other mRNA three prime ends. So the U7 small uh, SNRNP is an essential factor for the maturation of these histone mRNAs. So in contrast to the spliceosomal SNRNPs, which contain a ring-shaped assembly of seven uh, SM proteins in the, in the U7 SNRNP, the SM proteins D1 and D2 are replaced by U7 specific SM-like proteins LSM10 and LSM11. So this polypeptide composition and the unusual structure of LSM11 plays an important role in the histone RNA processing. So the histone RNA cleavage site is flanked by conserved sequences that interact with transacting uh, several processing factors. So upstream of the cleavage site, there's a highly conserved sequence of 26 nucleotide, which encompasses a hairpin-like structure. So this hairpin is recognized by the hairpin binding protein or the stem loop binding protein. So the hairpin binding protein acts acts by stabilizing the binding of U7 SNRNP to another conserved sequence element, which is rich in purines and uh, is downstream to the histone. So it's so this uh, purine-rich region is called histone downstream element. So moreover, a 100 kilodalton zinc finger protein was identified that interacts with the histone binding protein or the, and the RNA hairpin complex, but not with individual components of the complex. 
So the second conserved sequence in the histone 3 prime UTR, the purine rich uh, HDE, lies several nucleotides downstream of the cleavage site and interacts by base pairing with the U7 SN RNA component of the U7 SN RNP. So the special SM core structure of the U7 SN RNP contains five SM proteins that are also found in spliceosomal SN RNPs and two U7 specific proteins LSM10 and LSM11. So the three prime end of the mature histone mRNA is generated by endonucleolytic cleavage of the extremity, that is the end of the ACCA sequence, which immediately follows the hairpin structure. So in addition to being necessary for uh, RNA 3' prime processing, the U7 SN RNA plays the role of a molecular ruler that positions the cleavage activity close to the appropriate phosphodiester bond. So, so this indicates the role of these SN RNAs in histone RNA maturation. So now we have seen the functions of all of these. So we already ruled out the fact that microRNAs and siRNAs are endogenous RNAs that are involved in RNA silencing and shRNA uh, is an artificial RNA that performs similar functions to these uh, two RNAs which is also involved in uh, RNA interference. So the odd one out, the functionally odd one out would be option D, snRNA. So these are involved in spliceosomal reactions in the spliceosomes uh, which is involved in alternate splicing and in histone DNA maturation. So the answer to the question based on the function find the odd one out would be SNRNA. Thank you.